of he said. You say that she hits and punches you. She said. My husband has turned into a psycho. Are you afraid of him? I'm very afraid of him. But with so much at stake. Did you twist Sonia's arm and force her to the ground twice while she was pregnant? The truth needs to come out. I don't remember twisting her arm. Are those things true or are they not? Somebody is lying here. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. We ready to lose? Let's do it. I recently received a letter from a woman asking for my help for her brother and sister-in-law who are in a situation that has me very concerned. Now, Christina wrote the letter, and she's here. And I want you to listen to some of it, if you would. Uh, Christina, would you read the letter? Dear Dr. Phil, I am reaching out to you to appeal for your assistance, guidance, and intervention. My brother and sister-in-law are in a marriage that is in unimaginable shambles. Both of them are so angry about so many things. They are immensely disrespectful to one another and allow their children to consistently hear their horrific exchange of words. I am beyond hope sometimes in thinking that this monstrous situation can never be changed. Thanks for listening. All right, well, I'm, I'm glad you wrote the letter. I'm sorry that you needed to. Now, are you aware of any physical violence that's going on? No. Um, now, Christina's brother Lawrence and his wife Sonia are backstage right now. Uh, from what they've told us, things are much worse than I think you're aware. Uh, let's take a look. I'm afraid of my husband. Lawrence isn't the man that I married. We fight all the time. Sonia can argue 24-7. My husband will always start the fights. She's very combative and she uh, instigates a lot of fights and she'll push my button. Lawrence calls me every name in the book. Idiot, bitch, fat ass. He's, you know, he's yelled you to me in front of the kids. I've been called a and Sonia's called me a loser. Oh my God, this is a freaking nightmare. Lawrence is violent. Lawrence has punched holes in our armoire, doors. He has broken skateboards. Sonia's broken two laptops and a big TV. She gets very violent. She's hit him multiple times. When I'm violent towards Lawrence, I'm trying to protect myself and the children. I explode, and I'm violent towards them. I'm not violent. I'm just responding to what Sonia's actually doing. I'm doing it. Yeah, you're doing it? When I was pregnant, twisted my arm and forced me to the ground. And I just sat there and I'm like, do you realize what you just did? You just threw me down and I have a child in my stomach. And no response, nothing. Total fabrication, I didn't throw her down when she's pregnant. If she gets in my face and pokes me, she'll knock your head off, she'll spit on you. I would get and that out of my face because I'm, I'm really just gonna get upset. I've had to run away and lock myself in a closet just so I could get away from her. Once when we were at a hotel. She uh, grabbed the laptop and threw the laptop against the wall. He pushed me, I fell over the bed. I'm hitting him and he twisted my arms and I mean, it was just a nightmare. He just went stomp on my stomach and stomp my stomach and I was like, I couldn't breathe. This whole thing happened in front of the kids. The neighbors in the next hotel room ended up calling the police. They arrested Lawrence. I ended up staying overnight in jail. The whole incident made me feel like a huge failure. Well, I didn't feel good about it. I was embarrassed. I felt like someone was my fault, but I felt lost, like I do most of the time. My husband has turned into a psycho. I'm afraid that his violence may escalate. Okay, now, you guys just sat here and, and watched this. With you saying things that were going on and, and your comments, what's your reaction to this? I don't, I don't feel like I'm... Um, um, abusive uh, person. I'm surprised what she uh, has said about uh, me and um, being afraid of her. Being afraid of me. Uh -huh. Are you still... afraid of him? Yes, I'm very afraid of him. You're afraid of him. Let's, let's just be very clear about this. I want to be as crystal clear about this as I can. So I want you to be as honest as you can. And, and Lawrence, let me say up front, I'm not here to throw you under the bus. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you both. I want this situation to be better, but you got to own what you do. And, right. and, and let's, let's start this way. I'm going to go through a list. You tell me if these things are true. But I want to start this way, and let's, let's take out the, the labels for a minute. Let's take out abuse. 
let, let's take out violence. Let's, let's just talk about the actual acts and behavior themselves, whether they occurred or whether they not. Because you may have a different yardstick for measuring some of this than I do. Did you kick Sonia in the stomach during a fight at a hotel? No, I didn't kick her. Basically what happened was um, I, was on the, I was on the other side of the, of the hotel. Um, she wanted to communicate. Uh, I was on my laptop. She came over and got aggressive, took my laptop. I tried to get out of the door. She was in the way of the door, and I pushed her, which, is, which was not right, and I ran out, out the door. So you pushed her. You say you pushed her. Would that be wrong? Yeah, terribly wrong. Okay, you uh, say he kicked you. Yes, he kicked okay. me. Okay, would that be wrong? That would be wrong. If you kicked her in the stomach. Now, we obtained the police report for the incident that took place at the hotel. Now, according to the police, you were arrested for fifth degree domestic assault. Right. You were placed on probation for a year, and then the charges were dropped. And you admitted to the police that you were drinking. In fact, you blew a .05, I, I think, um, at, at the time, according to the police report. And they found physical evidence of an altercation. Now, Sonia had red marks on her chest. Her shirt was stretched and ripped. And you had a small scratch on your chest and a small cut on the inside of your upper lip. Right. Things got violent. Right. So you deny that you kicked her in the stomach. Now, look, we have to be honest here. We have to be honest. If I'm going to help you and your family, and I am committed to do that, Trust me when I say that. I'm committed to do that. We have to be honest. You cannot ex embellish and exaggerate, and you can't deny bad choices made at the time. Right. Now, are you telling the truth that he kicked you in the stomach? Yes, I'm telling the truth. Okay. Now, one of you's lying. Okay. Somebody's lying here. You were both there. Nobody knows what happened but the two of you. Is she lying? I did, I did not kick her in the stomach. <clears throat> and the reason why I threw her on the bed, if I wouldn't have tried to get out of the door... It would, have, it would have got worse, and she would have been more bad. Okay, violent. I understand you have a justification for it, but you, did, you admit that you threw her on the bed. Yes, you did. physically imposed your size and your will, and you threw her on the bed. Yeah. But, but that's the fact, right? Right. You two stand up. Yeah. Who, who's going to win this fight? Are, are you going to win a fight with her better than you're going to win a fight with somebody your own size. Right. I mean, we're both guys, both got male musculature. So you and I, it's a different balance of power than between you two, right? Right. So on its face, that's wrong. That's, that's definitely wrong. I, if I take you and, and throw you because I can, I'm imposing my will on you. True? Right. You're absolutely true. So you're right. bigger, you're stronger, you're more powerful. All right. True? Right. I, I, I'm just asking the facts. I'm not you're, asking you to judge it. No, you're right. Yeah. So I'm not saying that's abuse. or that's. I'm just saying, is that a fact that you can impose your physical will on her? Because when I said that, right. you went, oh, I man. Said, no, I said it was right. I said that's true and that's a fact. It is. It's okay, so thing. we can agree on it. Okay, sit down. Thank you. Did you twist Sonia's arm and force her to the ground twice while she was pregnant? <laughs> no. Well, I know this was a good while ago, but uh, you know, think back. Did I twist her arm and force her to the ground? Twice. Twice. While she was pregnant. Um, if she said I did, I, I guess I did. That, that's a cop out. You either did or you didn't. Well, I don't remember twisting her arm. She's actually saying that I did, you know, 10 years ago. Then I, I, guess, she, I guess I probably did then. Now, according to Sonia, you, you, you've called her, and I apologize for the language, bitch, fat ass, the <laughs> word, an f***ing <laughs> idiot, and that you've done this in front of the of the children, parents, and friends. I have used some uh, some bad language in front of the uh, kids, which is totally wrong. Um, so, uh, would that be an accurate list that I went through? I'm not uh, saying it's one you're proud of, I, or that, that you would want I've, to do. I've used, I've used several derogatory <clears throat> words against uh, Asanya um, around uh, whoever is around. So that would be true. Have you have you kicked doors in? No, I haven't kicked the door in, but I've, uh, uh, about a year ago, I actually punched our armoire and I actually uh, put a hole in that. So you punched a hole in the bedroom furniture, you, you've, you say he's kicked doors. Did you, did you break your golf clubs in half? Uh, actually, I think I did break my arm, yeah. About four or five years ago, I think I did break all my golf clubs in half, yeah. And how about the kids' toys? The kids have, you, toys. have you gotten frustrated and broken the children's toys before? 
did you snap your son's skateboard over your knee because uh, you were claiming he wasn't listening? I have broke my son's skateboard. On I purpose? To make a point? I think it was actually, yeah, because, yeah, that was a way of, um, it wasn't an accurate way, but that was actually the way I was uh, um, disciplining him, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not asking what that equals. I'm just asking if those things happened. And yeah. with the exception of whether you kicked her in the stomach or just threw her on the bed, you, you say you have done those things. Right. Okay. Now, you say there's two sides to this story, though, that, you know, she's not a little angel sitting on the side saying, gee, golly darn, wished you hadn't done that, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Because uh, you say that she provokes a lot of this and that she is actually very violent and confronting herself. She is very violent. Okay. Yes, she is. Well, and we're, so we're going to talk about that. Now, Sonia says Lawrence violated her in a way that she can't believe. We're going to talk about that next, and we're going to talk about what Lawrence says about his wife. We'll be right back. Sex life is very stressful. Lawrence is constantly wanting sex. It's not about love, it's about how can I get Sonia to have sex with me tonight? Come on. If he doesn't get what he wants, he takes it out on everyone. He is really controlling in that way. He controls our whole day. He controls our finances, our car, what we're gonna eat, whether or not the kids are gonna be able to go to a park or not. Sonia is the one that's controlling. She undermines my authority. I ask him what I control. What do I control, really? She'll just uh, contradict anything that I'm doing. You're giving him double punishment. That's ridiculous. And basically sabotage that. That was Sonia talking about how her husband's controlling behavior is paralyzing her and her children. Now, you believe that, that he controls you and dominates what you do? Yeah, Lawrence controls... 99% of my day. Um, no matter what, uh, I can make plans. I can make plans with a girlfriend, a family member. I can have things I need to do, go to the doctor, go to the grocery store, and he can control every single one of those by um, his behavior, his attitude. Um, his things come first, always. Well, now, according to Sonia, Lawrence is also crossing the line on what's appropriate between them sexually. Her sex life is very stressful. Lawrence is constantly wanting sex. It's not about love, it's about how can I get Sonia to have sex with me tonight? And if I don't, then he's constantly bugging me about it. And it becomes more like a job. She denies sex, sometimes I get back for it. I'm denying him sex because I feel like he doesn't appreciate it. He gets angry, if I don't get him sex, he'll take off, he might take my stuff. My husband has held my phone ransom for sex. He's taken money on my wallet, he's taken my ID. Sometimes I had to work off hard to, uh, to have her do anything. He flicked the lights on at 4 in the morning, pulls covers off of me, turned the TV on as loud as he possibly can until he gets what he wants. One morning, I found toilet paper between my legs, and I thought, what the heck is this? And it instantly hit me, like my heart just dropped. I was thinking, God, this guy did he freaking rape me. My husband had sex with me without me even knowing. She still believes to this day that I did something there. I didn't do anything that day. Okay, now, these are very serious allegations, again, of Im imposing a will. How much of that is correct, what she says, and how much of it is not? I think she's the most dominating person I've ever met. Um, she thinks that um, I dominate her day. Um, our days are uh, totally intertwined, so I don't know how you could say that. You know, dominate her day at all. Well, she says that uh, you hold things part. ransom for sex, that you wake her up, pull the covers off, turn the tea of as loud as you can until she gives in and does what you want to do. She says you had sex with her when she was asleep and didn't even know it. I'm asking yeah. how much of those things are yeah. true. First, first of all, we don't even have a, a TV. We have a, we have a monitor in our, house, in our bedroom, but we don't have a, a TV, and I'm usually downstairs um, that's untrue. That's untrue? That's untrue. I'm not... That is totally untrue. We do have a TV in our bedroom. Um, so what you're saying is I actually uh, uh, wake you up at, you know, 1, 2, 3 in the morning. Yes, you actually do. And, um, <laughs> you know, turn the lights. Yes, and... you actually do. Now, I'm trying to get to the facts here. I'm not labeling this. I'm just, I'm, I'm not even judging it at this point. I'm just trying to get the facts on the table so I know what to deal with so I can help you. I can't, I can't help you if I don't know what's going on. 
you are saying that he holds things ransom to extract sex from you. You say he held, held your phone ransom, that he has manipulated the situation and badgered you and yep. awakened you, yep. pulled the covers off of you. Are those things true or are they not? Somebody is lying here. No, I don't manipulate her for sex at all. Um, you know. So have you, have you said, I'm not going to give you your phone unless you have sex with me? No, I've never ever said that. So to she's her. lying? No. I've never said, hey, Sonny, I'm going I'm to keep your phone unless you have sex with me. Actually, no. just this morning um, in her hotel room, he had my phone and I, was, he was taking, I asked him to take a picture of me and he said, you come over here and get it and held it over here. I had to, I said, just give me my phone back because he wanted sex so badly this morning. He was taking my phone at that point and holding it for ransom. I couldn't get my phone back unless I was gonna have sex with him. And or, did you? No, I did not. I told him not doing that. D did you do that this morning? I had my phone and oh. we were playing around. I didn't have your phone. phone. It was my phone. Did you do that? Right. Your phone, her phone, my phone, anybody's Whatever. phone. D did you do that to try and extract <laughs> sex from it? I didn't try to extract sex from it. The case is, yeah, we were, we were, it was like 6 in the morning, and uh, we were getting up, and I was taking pictures, and I said, well, come over and get them. And she, uh, she goes, no, and I gave her a phone back. I'm like, hey, go come over and get them. You know, that was it. We'll either, way, either way, either way, either way. Okay, now, uh, let's talk about the other side of this. You say that she loses control, that she hits and punches you in the arms, the chest, and the stomach, yeah. that she has actually spit on you, yeah. followed you, I think, on the stairway or something, yeah. and spit on you on the stairway, and that, you, that she gets in your face to make you listen. It's confrontation up in his face. True? False? I think that is true. I okay. Know. That you have kicked in the big screen television. That you have kicked a hole in the big screen TV. True I, or false? That's true. I've kicked the big screen TV. I okay. kicked the TV. Kicked a hole in it. That you've broken his laptop twice. Yep, broken his laptop twice. He says he's gone in the closet and hidden in there and held his feet against the door to keep you out trying to get away from you. Yes, he has done that. I've been after him um, because of what he's done to our kids. Um, my kids' arms have been twisted. Their lips have been bleeding. Um, my son's been slammed to the ground and I'm trying to make sense of everything and he's taken off running around saying oh, nothing happened nothing happened nothing happened and I'm like well I got to pick up all of your pieces now with this child who's sitting here screaming and crying saying mom 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 and he takes off thinks there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that at all and the, and the clip that you just showed just fairly recently of me and uh, my son we were in the kitchen there um, you know Sonia was gone um, I don't know where she was gone it was just uh, it was the three kids. Um, Ian wasn't listening at all. You know, I said, well, we're not going to eat until you actually read just a little bit. You know, just a paragraph. Went from, you know, five pages to one page down to a paragraph. And he was playing games for, you know, three, four hours. And I'm like, you're going to get off and hungry. He said, no, actually, hours. yeah. He said, well, I'll just wait till mom gets home. And then, um, and they, you know, they're so smart. And, um, you know, they... Um, they know how to play both sides. And they know that if I say no, mom's going to say yes. So it's just the way it is. Well, we're actually going to talk about the children here in just a little bit. Let's take a break and come back and see where they are in all of this. And the sad fact is they watch it all. We'll be right back. My husband's violent behavior has taken a huge toll on my children. I don't think I'm violent, but you're like... My greatest fear is that he's gonna harm either me or one of the kids to the point where it can't be repaired. My husband's violent behavior has taken a huge toll on my children. He's very impatient with the kids. Come on, go. Lawrence has called my son I've called him an idiot a couple times, and it, which is horrible to say that to your son, but I have said that to him. He's bullied all the time by Lawrence about sports, about homework, what he's eating, the way he's dressed, the way he brushes his teeth. Put it back where you found it. Be a little more respectful. When he yells at them, the kids start to cry. They run away from him. My youngest daughter just will shut down. It's just really hard. Parenting. Yeah, you know, it's hard. It's really hard. The kids are afraid of what Lawrence is going to do to them. One time when Ian didn't respond quick enough, Lawrence thought Ian was being disrespectful and he slammed him to the ground. 
I don't slam me in on the ground at all. Earlier this year, my daughter came up to me screaming. I was having a hard time getting my youngest daughter to the bus on time. Lawrence grabbed my daughter's arm, twisted it, and then hurt her back. My daughter really knows how to manipulate her parents and is very good at it. I was so scared, I called Child Protective Services. I have to protect my children from my husband. I don't think I'm violent with the children. My children have asked me, why couldn't you pick a, a nicer dad? I tell the children, dad needs help. We need help. My greatest fear is that he's gonna harm either me or one of the kids to the point where it can't be repaired. The kids are caught up in the middle of all this. Yes. Are, have you been inappropriate with these children? Inappropriate. Too rough with them, calling them names, putting your hands on them in anger? I think I am too rough with the kids sometimes. Uh, I'm a bigger person, but uh, like I said, I love my kids. I love them very much. You do this in front of the kids? We do. You chase him, he's with you. I mean, it's just back and forth in front of the children. We do. You know, they're calling me from outside of the house, crying. Um, they call me from inside the house. I've never heard my name so many times. Mom, 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 mom. Mom, dad's not doing this. Mom, dad's doing this to me. Mom, mom, mom. It's always, I feel like I'm alone. I feel like I'm always the one having to take care of everything. Um, I feel like I'm the defender of my kids, myself. And that, I think that's why I do get aggressive and I get angry and, you know? Well, Sonia and Lawrence's 10-year-old son, Ian, had some things that he wanted to share with me about his parents and their behavior. Let's see what he has to say. My mom and dad fight a lot, and I don't want them to. When they fight, it makes me feel sad, and I cry. I don't get why they're fighting, and it's just really hard to watch. What makes me the most sad is when they're both hitting each other and stuff. When mom and dad get done with their fights, my dad has to yell at me or my little sister. My mom and dad yell a lot, but my dad yells more. I get on his nerves a lot. A lot of times I feel like both my parents put me in the middle of their fights. I feel like, well, what did I do? My mom talks to me about why they fight a lot. I don't think it's fair that I'm caught in the middle. Boy, you better get going right now. I wish Dr. Phil could fix it just by snapping his fingers. So what do you think about that? That's sad. That's him talking to somebody besides you guys. He's just, uh, he, he was hungry to talk to somebody. Yeah, I am yeah. too. Thanks. I just want help. What do you think about it, Lawrence? No, it's horrible. We got a dysfunctional family. Yeah, we need some help. I wrote down some things he said out of there I wanted to share it with you again. I feel good about my mom and dad coming on the show because I think it will help a lot. I, I just don't like them fighting. I hope when they get back from Dr. Phil that they will be a lot better than they are now because I feel so sad. I want to tell Dr. Phil that it's sad to watch my parents fight, and I would like for that to not happen anymore. You know, I tell him all the time it's not your fault, and I'm sorry, but I'm always apologizing to him. We'll be right back. captioning provided by are you tired of your hair breaking Do you know kids that grow up with this Lawrence hear me father to father here kids that grow up with this it changes who they are yeah. it's not like it happens and then when it's over it's over it changes who they are. You are their island in the ocean. You're their island in the ocean. That's where they're safe. And it's based on their belief that that's safe that gives them the ability to, to go out from the island into the world and, and grow up and be who they are. But if they never know if that island's going to be there when they come back or not, 
then they become very insecure and they get aggressive. Right. These kids will be aggressive in their relationships. The girls will be aggressed against, and he is likely to become an aggressor. They will do poorly in school. They will have anxiety. They will have depression. They will have a much higher incidence of suicide attempts, much higher incidence of drug and alcohol. The, the, what you guys are doing here, you, you can come on here and say, I want to be right. I'm right. By God, I'm right. You know, she's bad. He's this. He's that. But that's who's paying for this. That's who's picking up the tab. Now, I didn't put labels on this before. I just wanted to get the facts out. Let me put some labels on this now. What you're doing is abuse. It is domestic violence. It is physical abuse. Mentally, emotionally, and physically, it is abuse. Just what you have admitted to is abuse. No question about it. And you say, well, what about all of what she does? That's a relationship issue. When we're talking here, we have abuse issues, and then we have relationship issues. You say, well, why can she do it, and it's okay, but I can't, and it's abuse? She does it, no problem. I do it, I'm an abuser. Doesn't seem right. There is an imbalance of power here. You are bigger, you are stronger. What you're doing, you should not be doing. I know, I know. You shouldn't be doing that. That's a relationship issue. I want to help you do better with that. But that is not what I'm talking about right now. You're right, that needs to change. The way y'all interact needs to change. But the fact that you are six foot two, 220 pound man imposing your will on women or children is not okay. You can't, just based on that, Lawrence, it's not okay. That constitutes domestic violence, that constitutes abuse. You've got to stop that. Look, somebody's got to tell you the truth. Right, bring the truth out. I'm telling you the truth. What do you I'm hear here. me saying? <laughs> am I picking on you or am I telling you the truth? No, you're telling me the truth. Um, and you come halfway down across the country to, to not listen to what I need to listen to to get things straight. Your, your, your own sister here says, you, you say you've been afraid of him all your life. No, Lawrence and Sonia have a marriage that needs some help. And both of them are bullish and they're both very strong-headed people, both of them. But there's no violence in the marriage. And when you say I'm afraid of Lawrence, I just will do anything he asks me to because I don't want him to be mad at me. Okay, so you've, you've clarified what I said. I, I misread you. <laughs> do you feel like you've straightened it out? I don't know, I hope so. I'm sorry? I hope so. Okay, I, I want to be sure. Because what I'm talking about here is a man who needs to make some changes here. And, and if you want to trivialize that for him, I don't think that's a favor to him. That's not fair. I'm not trying to trivialize it. I'm just saying... So that wasn't fair either. <sighs> I, don't, I think Lawrence needs some help. I think Sonia needs some help. But I don't think that Lawrence <clears throat> is to be feared. Lawrence needs some help and Sonia needs some help. We are at two different levels here. Because of the imbalance of power, what a man does in a relationship to impose his will can be an abuse of power and control. What a woman does in a relationship is a relationship issue. It is not an abuse issue here. You may be too controlling. You may be one of those people that likes to get in somebody's face and get it to a point that may not be the best problem solving skills that you could use and I wanna give you some different coping skills. Mm -hmm. But she does not have the ability to isolate you and exercise power and control over you. And you do have that ability with her. Do you get the distinction? Um, we have to hold ourselves to a different standard, Lawrence. Yeah. Do you agree or disagree? Don't well, agree if you don't. You didn't come well, halfway across the country to tell me what I wanna hear either. No. I, you know, I do agree to an extent, but uh, you know, I, I think uh, what happens is I tend to um, back down. Maybe I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going around, I'm not going about it the right way, uh, being the father figure in the in the house. But uh, in reality, I, I find myself running away from Sonia 99% um, of the time, running in the car, sleeping in the car, sleeping, you know, just trying to get away from the argu arguments. But um, the car is actually his tool to isolate me. Um, he takes the car numerous times and leaves me with nothing. Nothing. Do you control the money? <laughs> uh, I don't think so, but she's going to say I do. Um, I have to ask him daily just for money for groceries. Um, do you have some money? Do you have some cash? And he'll dole it out as he sees fit. Um, 
he'll give me twenty dollars and see what you can get with that. Do you gamble? I uh, was gambling a couple of years ago, and I recently went back and uh, gambled for about a, about a month there, and then. Um, well, Sonia says it's an issue. She says, besides being verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive, she says that you yeah. have an addiction that's costing this family thousands of dollars. Let's hear what she had to say and let you react to it. Lawrence's gambling really concerns me. Lawrence gambles every day. Gambling is an escape for me. Lawrence can spend $800 a week on online poker and five to 40 bucks on lotto tickets. I don't think it's a big deal. She spends more on coffee than I do on lottery tickets. In the last year, Lawrence has spent about eight thousand to ten thousand dollars on gambling. When Sonia found out I was doing online poker, she was furious. His gambling is out of control. I've asked him to stop numerous times, and he can't stop himself. He can't. We'll lose everything we own if he does not stop. Is this an issue you need help with? Yeah, you know, I I use uh, I use gambling as an escape, and. Um, I fairly recently went back and started gambling. I think I actually wanted her to find out because I was doing, using um, our main business account. And um, I you wanted it. her to find out. I think so. Yeah, because she does all the books and uh, we'll grab back. Closed captioning provided by. I'm constantly thinking about divorce. I've filled out divorce papers, asked him to sign them, and he's flat out refused. I'm not gonna sign them. I don't wanna get divorced. I have someone here via Polycom. Uh, Sue Ells is president of the National Network to End Domestic Violence, and she's joining us via Polycom. Now, Sue says this marriage has some real earmarks of a domestic violence relationship. Sue, what, what did you wanna say? Well, if you really look at this case, Dr. Phil, you uh, and all the indicators are there. There's name calling, there's threats to her, threats to the children, uh, some sexual abuse is occurring. And it, it just, you know, the list goes on and on. And in the cases that we see, a number of these um, items are indicators that this violence is escalating and becoming more severe. And, and it makes me fearful. You know, love does not equal fear. And, you know, it shouldn't be fearful for her. So if she's feeling that fear in her stomach, then, you, you know, Sonia, you really need to think about that. And, and you can't change what you don't acknowledge. Your behavior, your way of interacting on this is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. I've said that. Mm -hmm. But that is a relationship issue. What's happening with you is different because of the imbalance of power. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trying to convince you of that, but I'm getting nowhere. I, I, I can see that I'm getting nowhere. This situation needs a hero, and you're the best candidate here. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, just man to man, that what you're doing is not right. I, I do need a lot of help, and uh, that's why I'm here. Are you acknowledging anything that I'm saying? Mean, you, you blame this on her. She makes me do it. You even say your daughter is smart and knows how to push your button. She does. So it, yeah, it's, she does. But it can't be her fault. It's not her fault. It I can't be no, your son's fault. It right. can't be your wife's fault. The only person you control is you. Right. And you have power that you have to manage in a relationship. And if you abuse the power, you abuse the relationship and everybody in it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You yeah. have to I be I better. I understand that. I, I need some direction. What do I need to do? You have to be willing to say, I will never put my hands on my wife or children in anger again, ever, no matter what. Right. That's where you start, right there. You just don't ever, just say, I will not accept that from myself. Character-wise, I'm a better man than that. I will not do that. Right. Do, do you get that? Yeah. I and and you shouldn't that. settle for that. You should not accept that for yourself or for your children. That's why I'm here. And, and, am I saying it? Yes. Clean enough? Yep. Straight enough? Yep. Plain enough? Yep. All right. We'll be right back. OK, 
Okay, I'm back with Sonia and Lawrence, and we're talking about relationships. And, you know, there are different levels in relationships. There are issues that involve the way couples interact and how they problem solve and how they parent. And then there's another level where I think there's an imbalance of power and things get to a level of what I call abuse. And that is, in my opinion, an absolute drop-dead deal breaker. I think if someone is in an abusive relationship and they're getting abused mentally, emotionally, physically, that's not okay. Now, if you're in a relationship like that, then you need to ask yourself what you need to do to stay safe and stay secure. And we, we've been talking about this today. Now, there are six steps to protect yourself and your children if you're in an abusive relationship. Number one, you need to listen to yourself. If you feel afraid, there's a good reason for it. And you need to make plans for your safety. You need to talk to an advocate at a domestic violence program. They can provide you with support and help make plans to keep yourself and the children safe. You need to talk to your kids about how to be safe if the situation were to escalate. This may mean teaching them to call 911 or run to a neighbor's house to be safe, whatever works in your situation. Make copies of important paperwork, social security numbers, birth certificates, immunization records. Put this documentation in a safe place in case you need to, to get to it. And you may need to seek legal advice uh, with an attorney who understands uh, domestic violence. Now, if you have a partner that says, look, if that's how you see things, then I'm willing to work on this, then you want to seek a therapist. And you can log on to drphil.com and download this six-step safety plan uh, today as well. What I don't want is for you two to have to go through any of that. I want you two to do what you have to do to keep this family intact. You know, I've talked about the fact that this situation needs a hero. What does that mean to you when I say that? I, would, I wouldn't use hero. You need, there needs to be somebody that provides the right direction in this family, uh, the right, right focus. And uh, I, I've been all over the place. And uh, if I'm all over the place, I guess everybody else is. And, well, what I mean by hero is, you know, there comes a time where somebody has to step up and say, you know what, I'm not interested in being right. I'm interested in being happy somebody has to step up and say, I'm going to lead us in the right direction. I'm going to take the high ground. I'm going to rise above all this. I'm going to go home. I'm going to sit down and apologize to my children. I'm going to say, look, if I've gotten out of hand and, and scared you guys, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to do that. But, but son, I, I love you, and I'm sorry if I've scared you. I, I, I didn't mean to do that. Girls, I don't want you to see guys this way. I, I love you guys. And... I'm not going to have this in this family anymore. That's what I mean when I say the situation needs a hero. And Lawrence, you can be that man. You can be that father. You can be that husband. And you have to do the same thing. <laughs> Just take these kids out of the middle of this. Are, are you willing to work on this with him? Yes, yes. If I make specific arrangements for you all to have that help, back home, will, will you do it? Yes. No, Not because she wants to, but because you say, I, I need to take my game to the next level. I think it's really important. It's the most important thing. I need to stop this gambling. I need to stop the behaviors that seem to be bothering other people. Right. I need to be more sensitive to everybody's feelings and, and step up to it and, and learn better ways to do what you're doing. Okay, can we do that? Let's make this one work and let's come back here and say, you know, Dr. Phil, we made this work. We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Sue Ells, president of the National Network to End Domestic Violence. And if you or someone that you know is in an abusive relationship that needs help, then call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-7233. Help is available to callers 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Now, for more information, you can go to their website at www.ndvh.org. Also, for information on educational materials, issues, crisis centers, shelters, you can go to the National Network to End Domestic Violence at www.nnedv.org and then click on Resources to find your state. 
So it, it's all there. And we're going to continue to work with you guys. And I, and I want you to come back here and, and show people that these situations can turn around. And Lawrence, I give you a lot of credit for coming. He did not have to come here today. I know. Because uh, you knew I was going to ask you hard questions. And I, I think you came here because you care about your family and you care about your children. Yeah. And I, I commend you for doing that. So, so thank you. Thanks for being here so long.